doing anything along those lines. I can't actually see if anyone has joined. Is have people been able to join? Okay. Yes, I know people have, yeah. Okay, good. Oh yeah, that's right. Okay. Nice. Tsunami early warning. That sounds really, really interesting. <laughs> I live in an area where we do sometimes worry about tsunamis. So um, that's super cool. Great. Thank you, everybody. That's wonderful. Um, we would love to hear where are you joining us from? Where in the world are you currently? I'm joining from Oregon. Ooh, New York. Oh, nice. India, Palo Alto. Cool. Nice. Oh, Germany. Wow. Well, good evening to those in other parts of the world. It's it's morning for us over here in, on the West Coast. Great. Wonderful. Um, okay. And this is helpful for us to just get a sense of who's in the room. So you can use, read these little um, uh, phrases here and just kind of, you know, tell us where you are. Do you agree? Do you not agree? Um, just to get a sense of how people are feeling about HPC, high performance computing, um, where, where you're at. Yeah, because our new user training is for not just for people who are new to our system, it can also be for people who are new to HPC. So it's kind of nice for us to know, um, you know, how we how we should cater or, you know, how we should structure our, our future trainings. Um, so great. Okay. And I think there's one more question here. Um, how are you feeling going into today's session? Are you feeling excited? Are you feeling nervous? Or you're just kind of neutral? You're just, you're not feeling really one way or the other. Excited. Okay, good. Lots of people, mostly excited, maybe a little nervous. Not too many people feeling indifferent. That's good. I was hoping that. People are one way or the other. Excellent. And I'm I am going to ask this question again at the end. We have a quiz at the end, so uh, just to keep you on your toes. Um, but I just you know it'll be good for us to know. You know, did we did we make you feel worse about using the system? Did we make you feel better? That's kind of our goal is to make you feel even more empowered. So. Um, great. Awesome. Okay. Thanks everybody. Thanks for joining. And, uh, let's go ahead and get started with our first presentation. Um, so Rebecca, do you want me to run the slideshow or do you want to run it? Probably easier for me to run it. If okay. That's all right. Yeah, that would be great. Okay. Let me share my screen. And to all of our users, don't be shy. Feel free to come on camera so we can see everyone's wonderful faces as well. I saw a question about whether our slides are going to be shared, and the answer is yes. Uh, we're going to. I am posting those right now. Perfect. So the link to these will be in the um, Q and A doc to start with, and then you you can find them on the website basically. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Thanks, Rebecca. All right. Well, thank you, everybody. And good morning or afternoon or even evening or night, depending on where you are today. Uh, so my name is Rebecca Hartman Baker. 
I lead the user engagement group. You may already know my name because I send you an email every Monday. So uh, I'm going to just give you a brief welcome and a little overview of NERSC. Okay, so first we're going to have a little intro to NERSC and we're going to talk about the science that people do here. And then we're going to talk about interacting with NERSC staff. So in our intro here, so NERSC is an acronym for National Energy Research Scientific Computing Center. Uh, we were established in 1974, and we were the first unclassified supercomputing center. Uh, the original mission was to enable computational science as a complement to magnetically controlled plasma experimentation. And so actually our name was not NERSC at that time. It was something about magnetic plasma computing. I don't remember. Um, but if you notice the date, so 1974 to 2024, this is our 50th anniversary year. So we're pretty excited about that. Um, today, our mission has changed somewhat from that original mission. It's broadened. So uh, we are here to accelerate scientific discovery at the DOE Office of Science through high performance computing and extreme data analysis. And we are a national user facility, but we are housed at Berkeley Lab. So uh, people like me and Charles and Libby, we are all employees of Berkeley Lab. So NERSC is the Mission High Performance Computing Center for the DOE Office of Science Research. And so for those who don't know, the Office of Science is actually the largest funder of physical science research in the whole country. Uh, and so there are these six sort of main areas that the Office of Science uh, funds research in. So uh, bioenergy and environment, um, computing, materials, chemistry, and geophysics, particle physics and astrophysics, nuclear physics, and fusion energy or plasma physics. Uh, so now the allocations of time and resources that people get on nurse resources is primarily controlled by the Department of Energy. Um, so 80% of it comes from the um, DOE Annual Production Awards. It's called ERCAP. You may have seen emails from me about ERCAP. Um, and these are awards of, you know, somewhere between 100 to, you know, 10,000 hours on Perlmutter. Uh, these are proposal-based awards, and they're chosen by DOE program managers. Um, so that's the majority of uh, probably the projects that just about everyone here is in. Uh, another 10% of our time is given to the Oscar Leadership Computing Challenge. Sometimes we call that the ALCC. Oscar uh, stands for Advanced Scientific Computing Research, something like that. Um, oh, Jack, I got it right. Woo, go me. Um, so anyway, that... Uh, that is for sort of higher risk, but high, potentially high payoff sort of projects. And then 10% of it, we keep for ourselves the nurse reserve, and we use that for our own strategic initiatives. Um, for example, right now, we we have um, quant a lot of quantum simulations for quantum computing going on. Uh, that's what we're using our reserve for. We also use it for education projects and a few other things like that. So... We have about 10,000 users at NERSC, and they come from about 800 different institutions and national labs. Um, they're from all 50 states and also from 53 different countries. Uh, you can see that uh, a plurality of our users are actually graduate students. That's our biggest numbers. Um, and then if you include graduate students, postdocs, and undergraduates, uh, I would say that the majority of our users or close to it are students or early career users. Uh, about 60% of our users come from universities, another almost 30% from DOE labs and uh, other government labs, another 5%. Um, and we have, you know, roughly a thousand codes that are running on our machines and we have hundreds of users logging in every day. And the output of this is we have over 2,500 referee publications per year uh, from work that people perform on NERSC. So that's pretty cool. 
And that's really what we're here for. So we are always in awe of um, the groundbreaking science that our users produce. These are just a few examples from recently, and I won't really go through them, but you can see it's a wide variety of different scientific areas that people are working in. Uh, we're also really proud of our Nobel Prize winning users. So uh, there are six uh, here that are associated with NERSC. Um, you may recognize that guy in the top right there, at least his name, Perlmutter, um, <laughs> as the name of our supercomputer. So we always name our machines after scientists and um, this latest one we've named after Saul Perlmutter. So let's talk about Perlmutter and other things like that. So let's talk first about our systems roadmap. So we buy a new system every five to seven years, kind of depending. Um, so those of you who have been around for a while, you may have worked on Edison. Uh, and then we had Corey, which we retired in uh, last year. And so Corey was a really great machine. And we launched this program because Corey had a slightly different architecture than anything our users had ever used before. We launched a program called NESAP to transition our applications to the architecture of Corey, which was unique at the time. It was a, a many core architecture. Uh, and then Perlmutter, um, Perlmutter has, is our current system and it has CPU and GPU nodes. And again, we've never had a machine with GPUs and unique architecture. So we continue to work with our users to transition applications and uh, to, to be able to take advantage of those GPU nodes. Um, NERSC 10, so you can see seven is Edison, eight is Corey. This just means this is the number of machines that we've bought. So we'll be buying our 10th machine after 50 years. That's a pretty reasonable number, I guess. Um, we're gonna be buying our 10th machine. It's gonna arrive hopefully in 2026. And we have made a decision about uh, the vendor and that is everything I can tell you about that system. But it will be uh, probably four times more powerful than Perlmutter. That's kind of the, the way that they try to try to do these things. And uh, it'll be a really cool machine. I'm looking forward to it. Okay, so Perlmutter, like we were talking about, this is our flagship machine right now. It's named after Saul Perlmutter, who shared the 2011 Nobel Prize in Physics for the discovery of the accelerating expansion of the universe. And the way that he actually did that was he uh, combined supercomputing simulations with experimental data analysis. And so that's why we also named the machine after him because you know, we want to combine both simulations and data analysis on a single machine. So um, Saul Perlmutter is the first living person that we named our system after. So we had to like ask him, hey, is it okay? You know, can we name our system after you? He said, yes, on one condition. He said, my last name is too long. It's 11 letters, I think, something like that. Anyway, so he wanted, uh, he wanted us to allow people to log in as his first name, which is only four letters, saul.nursk.gov. So in addition to logging in to perlmutter.nursk.gov, you can also log into the same system with saul.nursk.gov. So anyway, it's much shorter, it's much easier to type. So what that tells you is that no one will ever name a system after me because my name is too long. Anyway, let's talk about the architecture of the machine. So we have two different types of blades in the system. And um, ideally, it would be great if you all came to our uh, 15th anniversary celebration, and then you could actually go on a tour of the system. Or if you're local, send us an email and we'll get you in to see a tour of the of Perlmutter. It's pretty cool. So we have two different types of blades. Like I mentioned before, we have GPU-based nodes and we have CPU-based nodes. And so each of those we have uh, sort of like a little architecture here. So you can see um, on a GPU based node, what we have is we have a CPU and then we have four GPUs on the node. And then um, on the uh, CPU node side, this is what looks like, this is what a node looks like. So it has two CPUs and with memory attached to each of them. And then uh, these are put into these blades. Now, normally blades um, in a data center are put in sort of this direction. So 
horizontally, I guess. We, we stack them actually vertically in the system um, because uh, it's more efficient for the, the way that we cool this, this machine. Um, and so here's a little picture of the machine over here and one of our colleagues giving a tour. Uh, and so these are, each of these are the nodes. You see these, like these handles, that's where you can pull the, pull the blade out. And then these are the cooling. So we have a, a coolant in there, a liquid coolant. And uh, the blue is uh, the cold input and the red is the hot output. And actually, if you feel those hoses, you can feel the difference. So I, I think that's kind of interesting. Um, I see we have a hand raised. So Chin Tian, would you like to ask a question? Sorry, just to miss touch, sorry. Oh, okay, <laughs> no problem. Okay, so anyway, that's what it looks like on the inside. This is a door right here, and you can see uh, the pretty, the, the 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 pretty picture here, the mural. So you can see that we are like roughly here, I guess, somewhere in here. Anyway, in the machine. Okay, so let's talk about how you know it takes a lot to make a system. So it's not just the blades. We also have a a large all flash scratch file system. And it is interconnected. And the, we also have an inter interconnections between all of the nodes that is slingshot interconnect um, made by HPE. HPE is who, who made this, uh, this machine. Uh, and so it has four NICs, and I don't remember what NIC, NIC is an acronym, but basically it's a connection. Um, so it has four of them on a GPU node, and then they have just one on a CPU node. I think it's just network interconnection card. There we go. Thank you. Uh, and so we have a total of 3,072 CPU only nodes. And each of those have two AMD Milan CPUs. And um, a total aggregate of uh, 1,536 terabytes of CPU memory. Um, and then we have uh, 1,792 CPU or sorry GPU accelerated nodes. Uh, each of each node has four NVIDIA A100 GPUs and one AMD Milan CPU. It's the same CPU as in the CPU nodes, uh, and so we have an aggregate of 448 terabytes of memory for on the CPUs across the accelerated GPU nodes, and uh, 320 terabytes of GPU memory across the nodes across all nodes. Okay. Um, so then finally, the system is connected to ESnet. If you've not heard of ESnet, um, it's another DOE facility, but basically it's kind of the ISP for the Department of Energy. And so it has connections throughout the whole country and it actually has a connection that goes over to Europe to connect with CERN. Um, but for us, we have uh, two 400 gigabit connections directly to ESnet plus two 100 gigabit connections. So we have a, a terabit connection all together with ESnet coming from uh, coming from NARSC. Okay. Um, and then another thing to mention is that, you know, we don't just have Perlmutter. We have a bunch of other stuff. So we have a lot of storage systems. The big big one that we have here is called the HPSS Tape Archive, and it's about 300 petabytes worth of storage there. Uh, we have the Global Common File System. That's 130 petabytes, and that's something that your project would have some allocation of space on that. And then we have our home system. These are global home system, and we have uh, 450 terabytes on there. Uh, we also have data transfer nodes um, that you can use to transfer data into and out of NERSC. And we have some gateway nodes. And then we have SPIN, which is kind of our internal sort of version of the cloud, where you can have some edge services such as um, science gateways or um, uh, other sort of access into NERSC. Okay, so do we have any questions so far? Okay, I'm gonna take that as a no. 
and I shall move on. Okay. Oh, we already did that. Okay. So now we're going to talk about NERSC staff. And so really, honestly, I think the best power that we have at NERSC is not the supercomputers themselves necessarily, but actually our staff. So first, I'm going to talk about our group, the user engagement group, and then I'll talk about consulting and account support and how people can get help. So let's talk about this. So this is my group. Um, we have 10 people plus me in this group. And um, and so you, you see two of them here today. So Lippy and Charles are, are my two um, science engagement engineers. So they're kind of charged with really engaging in the user community and uh, helping us to develop it into a user community of practice. Very excited about that. Um, but then all of these other folks have other very important roles also at NERSC. So, um, we also ha we have the uh, nurse user group, and this is our community of nurse users, and it's a great source of advice and feedback for us at NERSC. We we do listen to what our user group says. Uh, we also have regular monthly uh, monthly community calls hosted by NERSC, and we have a Slack channel. So we encourage you to join the NUG Slack. Uh, it's a really great place to talk with other users, and then also. We also encourage you to join us at the NUG annual meeting, which is going to be October 22nd to 24th for our 50th anniversary. And this is going to be a really special meeting. It's going to be pretty cool and a lot of fun. So I encourage you to come. Okay, next we're going to talk about training. So we provide a training program for you all, uh, for all users of all skill levels, interests, and personas. By that, I mean just you know types of users. All of our trainings are recorded and they are professionally captioned. And then we post them to our NERSC YouTube channel. And we also, of course, post our slides to the training event webpage. Um, and if you wanna see more info on upcoming and past events, you can go to our training website. Uh, we have a collection of categorized training materials and we have a training events archive as well. Okay. Now let's talk about interacting with NERSC, uh, with our consulting and account support area. So um, first I'm gonna show you, we have a whole bunch of folks here who are on our consulting and account support teams. And all of these people are here to help you. They, um, they kind of get paid to help you, right? Like it's our job, right? Like if we didn't have people to help, we would all get laid off. So we really love it when people send in questions and ask us questions. There's no such thing really as a dumb question. So how do you send us a question? Well, you can send us a help ticket, but that would be the, the easiest way to do it. Um, you just go to help.nursc.gov and you log in and you get to our help portal here. This is just a screenshot of, of what it looks like. Uh, right in the middle, smack dab in the middle there, there is this open ticket um thing and so you just click on that one and then you can submit a ticket now when you submit a ticket we would really appreciate it if you would help us to help you uh sometimes we get a ticket like oh my job my job failed and then we're like well okay but like what happened like what was your job what were you trying to do right we need to know a little bit more than that so if you can help us by providing some specifics about what is the problem you know what machine were you using what kind of node where were your files stored when did it happen what modules did you have loaded uh how did, what did you try in order to fix it or or to diagnose the problem or something and then is there a way that we can reproduce the problem so that would really help us if you can provide us with as much information as possible. And then we also have a, a, a reference in our documentation about you know, how to file a good ticket. So that's really helpful to us if you just read that uh, and then file your ticket and ask us a question. And like I said, we love questions. We want you to ask us questions. Um, you know, Don't be shy. I know sometimes people feel like, oh, I'm just wasting their time or they're going to be mad at me or whatever. But honestly, no, we really love it when you send us a question. And we actually really love simple questions too, because then that makes us happy. We feel like, oh, look, I did something. I accomplished something today. You know, I helped this person with this question. Uh, 
So there's no such no such thing as a as a bad question for us. We really love getting uh, tickets from you. Oh, I think I skipped a page. Okay, so in return, what do we do? So our our first response is going to be within four business hours. We're going to get back to you within four business hours. Um, and our business hours are Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Uh, and that's specific time. And of course, only not holidays and not weekends. So uh, we answer, if, if something comes in over the weekend or overnight, we answer it the next morning, the next business morning, I should say. Um, and so we're going to do our best to help you resolve your problem and keep you up to date on what's going on and how we're progressing on that. Um, we're also going to try to accommodate any needs that don't kind of fit exactly within our operating structure. We may or may not be successful at that. Um, and then, of course, we always welcome your feedback and your constructive criticism because we'd love to know how we can do better, how we can serve you even better. Um, and speaking of that, we will have a user survey coming out um, at the end of this year. So we would really love to get your feedback when we do the user survey. And that's that's honestly how the best way for us to understand what's going on and how we can make things even better for our users. Okay, so next I'm going to talk to you about uh, our user appointment system. So in 2018, we began offering office hours and we still do office hours. Um, but basically this is like an open Zoom meeting where you can join in to get help with a particular topic. So it started off with multi-factor authentication when we were converting from just using passwords only to using multi-factor authentication. Uh, and so the problem the problem that with office hours, honestly, is that uh, we sit there for a really long time and nobody comes on. And then all of a sudden we get like 12 people. <laughs> so that's a problem with office hours. Uh, but you know, it still is pretty effective. Um, and so we still do use office hours. Um, but a better system that we've developed is appointments. So this is more efficient use of everyone's time, right? So we offer 30 minutes appointments on a variety of topics. So some stuff that we offer includes GPU basics, optimization, file systems, GPUs with Python, containers, NERSC 101, um, various different things. Uh, and so you can schedule an appointment at nursc.as.me. Okay, so I think that brings me to the end here. So does anybody have any quick questions for me? Um, otherwise, I will let you move on to the next topic. So Laura's asking, when are the office hours? Um, so we schedule them throughout the year and you'll get, um, sometimes you'll see emails where we'll let you know, hey, these office hours are coming up. Um, uh, the Really the best way is to, um, we have a uh, Google Calendar with all of our public events. Um, if you use Google Calendar, you can just subscribe to that. So you can just add it to your calendar um, or you can visit that calendar and see what's coming up. 